Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Stacy Bucus. I'm co-chair with Olivia Charney of this year's Nantucket by Design. I'm thrilled you're all here for this extremely popular event, our design panel today. Um, I have a crib sheet with a few thank yous and notes. First of all, I'd like to thank our presenting sponsor of the entire uh, week of events, William Ravis. I'd like to thank our event sponsors for the panel today, Blue Flag, Stark Carpets, and Veranda Magazine. Um, I'd like to remind you that we have two wonderful shopping events who are donating to uh, the Nantucket Historical um, Association, um, the uh, Poppy Caravan, which is a group of several different vendors, and they'll be at the 1800 house. And also Casa Branca, which is um, by designer Alessandra Branca, and she is at the boutique at the Summer House in Sconset. Lastly, I'd like to remind everyone to mute their phones, please. Oh, I see a lot of people reaching into their bags. That's a good sure, sign. Minus. And also that after the talk, we'll be having a book signing. We have um, um, Chris and Ashley's books, and um, actually my recent book. And um, I think that's it. Steele, you don't have your book, right? OK. <laughs> and I will now turn it over to our moderator, the esteemed editor of Veranda <laughs> Magazine, Steele Marcoux. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you all so much for joining us here this morning. I'm thrilled to see such a packed and engaged crowd. And I'm going to let you all know, I have my phone out because I have my notes on my phone, but it is on airplane mode, so I will not be getting any text from my husband who has my two children somewhere on this island. <laughs> I can't say the same about yesterday. Um, without further ado, I'd love to introduce these fabulous panelists. The panelists, thank you so much for joining me in one of my favorite places for one of my favorite weeks. Uh, let's start on this end with Chris Spitzmiller. Chris is a New York-based ceramicist and product designer. Um, he uh, is also a tastemaker and author. His book is one of my all-time favorites, A Year at Clovebrook Farm, which you all can purchase a copy after this. His, um, he started his career making beautiful glazed lamps that are now found in most of the most beautiful homes around the world, including the White House. And he's extended his creativity now to tableware and other ceramic accessories. And um, as many of you also know, he's cultivated such a beautiful lifestyle through his gardens and entertaining um, at his farm in Millbrook. Speaking of Millbrook, <laughs> next to Chris is Ashley Whitaker, a New York-based designer who also keeps a house in Millbrook. Um, I learned last night that Chris and Ashley went to college together, which I did not know. They're longtime friends, which I did know. Um, Ashley's style is uh, sort of very classic. She, um, there's a lot of tailored details in her work, but she also has a uh, kind of fresh and modern color sensibility, which I happen to love, and beautiful proportion. And Ashley got her start working for Markham Roberts, another wonderful designer. She also has a new book out. Please be sure to check that out after our talk. <clears throat> Next is Tara Gerard, a Charleston and New York-based event designer. And um, scrolling back to the beginning of my notes, Tara is the creative director of Soiree, one of the most sought after event design firms in the country. She creates truly exceptional environments that um, you know, just have a way of making guests feel both dazzled as well as very comfortable. And I know this from personal experience. I was mentioning to Tara that the first wedding I was in out of college was planned by Tara some um, 20 plus years ago. <laughs> um, and finally, Keith, Keith Robinson uh, from my native Georgia. Um, Keith is a garden expert and designer as well as an event designer. And um, he lives at his fabulous red wine plantation, a 19th century farm outside of Atlanta. He is an entertaining genius, and his, he has this great sense of mixing heirlooms with new pieces with ease. Um, and he also kind of authentically leads the farm-to-table life. He's been doing that well before it was sort of a buzz phrase, um, and creates a sense of magic at every event that he designs. So I can't imagine a better group of people to help us explore the topic of celebration of home, the theme of Nantucket by Design this year. And without further ado, I'm going to start our slideshow. Panelists, as you know, I have the capability of going back to any image that we would like to revisit. Um, and let's start out just by asking you, each of you, 
What celebration of home means to you? So Keith, I'm gonna start with you. How does celebration of home, how can you sort of achieve that in the garden, for example? Well, I think that, that gardens are very, very personal things. And I know that for myself, having grown up in the mountains of North Carolina, which if you don't know this, oh. has the largest um, collection of native uh, plants and flowers than anywhere in the world. Wow. And so growing up <clears throat> being exposed to all of that sort of um, gave me not only th that sense of wonder that gardening can create for you, but also um, how you can use those tools that you're given by nature to create something beautiful for yourself. And so that sense of home comes, I believe, from incorporating all of those things that you love so much into things that you then want others to enjoy. I love that. Oh, you're sort of giving back to others. Absolutely, absolutely. Through that celebration. Every step on the path. I love that. Tara, let's talk about for event design, even on a large scale or a small scale, how can that help us sort of find our own sense of celebration of home? Well, I know you're pulling it into that, but for a celebration of home in my world, my favorite weddings are home weddings. Oh. And so that is probably the ultimate celebration of home, right? I think so many um, of our clients over the years and their parents, it's kind of a dream to go back to that old school way of coming home to do your wedding. And to this day, that's my very favorite thing to do. Mm. So you cultivating that fabulous garden for 20 years to be prepared for your daughter's wedding. <laughs> I love um, it. So that I can come in and destroy your garden. <laughs> um, so when I bring in the, um, you know, the forklifts to put in the tent and the dumpsters to um, trash the grass, um, that's what I come to do to celebrate your home and their wedding. <laughs> but, and also, but seriously, um, to me, uh, home wedding is the ultimate celebration of the best way to have a party. So it's the start of another line of the family. It and is. And, you know, for me, for doing um, wedding planning and design for almost 30 years now, there's there's a home wedding right there in Love someone's it. yard wow. I just did. Uh, there's, you're getting to design for me as a designer is a new place that no one else has ever been. It's a location that nobody else can come back to. Mm -hmm. And it really makes it that special, unique place for your family and your daughter. And then she'll always be able to say, that I got married in my backyard. Oh, I and love that. Um, so I love it. So that's, that's my answer for that. Love that. <laughs> Let's talk about celebration of home when it comes to interiors. How do you, well, I think I, I grew up in a house that was, the name of my book is The Well-Loved House. And I, I always think of my mother's house as sort of the original well-loved house. I mean, that's where everybody congregated after tennis games, for cocktails, for swimming. My mother just created a very welcoming home, okay. and it's just how I was raised. I was raised, you know, with someone who entertained graciously and constantly, and to me, that is a sign of the comfortable, welcoming home, one that you're able to welcome guests on, you know, just on a moment's notice. I, I think that. that's a lot of fun, is being able to just welcome people into your house, have them feel comfortable, and as important as that is have you feel comfortable. Mm. You know, I think the more comfortable the occupant and the hostess is, the more fun the guests have I love at that. parties and, and just being a guest in, in our home. We'll get into some specific tips and <laughs> tricks on that, how to, how to feel more comfortable um, in a minute. But Chris, how about you? When it comes to the garden or setting a beautiful table, um, how, what does celebration of home mean to you? For me, it's all about making other people feel welcome, you know, and being comfortable in your own skin and practice, 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 you know, yes. get a roast chicken that you've made a hundred times and like, just know that you can bake that on the back of your hand without even thinking about it. And just, it's those things that you can offer up. Like what Tara was saying, the wedding at home, Anthony and I are getting married this September and he's gonna bake our wedding cake and I'm gonna make these meringue mushrooms and countless friends have gone, you can't bake your own wedding cake, you can't. <laughs> and <laughs> Alex Papa Gracidius, who's here, is a good friend of us who's had lots of our things and says, you're a better baker than most professional bakers <laughs> and you can do this. And you know, it's through doing stuff like this and offering up your own things, and I'm not saying we have a caterer who's coming, who's cooking the dinner, and there'll be help to serve, but as much as we can do on our own, we are going to do, and I think those are the things that endear people to you, instead of yeah. it just have it all be like, you know, out of a box. Yeah, um, sure. What an expression of love for your guests. Yeah. 
It's amazing. And I love that you also mentioned practice because I think practice, people feel practice, like practice. we've made one wedding cake already. There's going to be several more. <laughs> wedding I love it. Made. Not the whole full thing, but you know, I'm like, we need like one a week, I think, to yeah. taste, you know, to <laughs> cut the wedding stress that we're having to deal with. Because at the same time, while this is exciting, the stress is like, ah. How, how have know. I not been invited over for a tasting? I was going to say, I'm available <laughs> for tasting. Yeah. I'm available <laughs> once a week. The first the tasting same. was in the Hamptons. We took okay, the cake out okay, to the Hamptons, okay. so it was there. <laughs> So give you a pass. We want to see if it could travel well. <laughs> um. This is important. So there are some kind of common threads that came up from each of your answers, even though each of you does a slightly, you know, sort of different thing um, that I kind of want to delve into a little bit. The first is graciousness. It seems mm. like graciousness is part of each one of your answers in terms of what celebration of home really means. So can, can you... Give a little more specifics about what it takes to create a gracious sense of welcome. And Ashley, I might start with you on this Great. one. Great. Well, I, I enjoyed Alex's talk yesterday so much. And it was just about so much beauty and so much luxury and elegance. But the most important thing, my takeaway from that was you need to live in this house. Mm. I don't care how formal it might look. If it works for you and it's comfortable live in your rooms. It's called a living room for a reason. And Love here's that. an example of a house we did in Millbrook, oh. another Millbrook house, actually two in a row right there. Do I need to but go back? No, you don't need okay. to go back, but it's just about, <laughs> Cause I can. Um, you know, a living room should be lived in. And I think that is just the absolute most important thing that I can do for my clients and for myself is I gave a, um, in my talk, one of my opening lines was, nothing's precious, nothing's off limits. And I was, I was saying it to my husband one day and my son goes, nothing's off limits. And with that, he goes rebounding from sofa to sofa to sofa to sofa, which he does every day on a, on a regular basis anyway. But that's really the way I like to live. You know, yeah. everything's fixable, everything's replaceable or gets better with age. So that just creates a wonderful sense of comfort in my mind. And it, it helps guests feel more welcome too. Absolutely. They can tell if the person really yep. lives in his or her living room. There are room. no coasters at my house. You put a glass down on anything. I love that. I don't care. I love that. <laughs> what about a gracious sense of welcome outdoors? Well, one of the things that you would discover if you came to our home is you would see places to entertain throughout the entire garden. I love that. Some of them you have to discover as you move from room to room, outdoor room to room. But literally everywhere within the garden, there is a place that is a stage for entertaining, whether it is casual cocktails or it literally is a dinner. There are tables literally all over the yard. I love that. And so that's, that I feel is, is a way that you can certainly um, help, help folks to understand that they are welcome. I think too, to speak to what Ashley said, I mean, we live in an 1841 house and um, <clears throat> It is not without its its uh, very interesting um, picadillos, I'll say. But yeah, you know, <laughs> I think that anyone that might live in a heritage home would understand that that nothing is precious, much like you said. And um, you know, the floors creak and the the walls sweat, and I love you it. know all the things that that um, that you just sort of discount as living in a place that is a part of history. But I think too that much also like Ashley said nothing is precious when you have dogs and when you have people that visit when you garden mm -hmm. constantly and you're coming in the house with dirty boots on which my husband hates me to do <laughs> but nevertheless it happens every single day so I think that that all of that helps to establish how comfortable you are living in your home and hopefully can rub off on those that come to visit. Keith, I love that you talk about history and a sense of age and how that also can can help establish a sense of welcome and comfort and that nothing is precious. And Chris, you live in a historic home as well. How, how it has history sort of helped infuse your home with a sense of welcome? So my house is from, the kitchen wing is from the late 1700s and then the big part is from 1830 or 1840. And there is a front door in the house that there is no access to other than walking across the lawn. <laughs> so everybody comes in our kitchen door. And I the kitchen it. door is our, our welcoming door and it's a congregating space. And we try and move people either you know out to the garden or into the living room so Anthony and I can cook and get dinner on. But you know, back to what the original question is, Albert Hadley was one of my big friends in 
and mentors. And every time I went to his apartment at 10 East 85th Street, he would be standing in the doorway. You know, he would always oh, be there. ready and ready to greet you. So as a guest, there's no crime in being 15 minutes late, which is a good lesson. I, I When people come on time or even before on time, I'm like, uh. <laughs> I'm like running around. And they want to help. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, please, say no please. If no. they do want to help, you need to say yes, and you need to incorporate them. That's there true. are always tasks that can be done. People can pour water. There's chairs that can be pulled up. There's always something. People really want to contribute, and you don't need to carry the full burden on yourself and people like to to be included on it so yeah that's something else that you have to prepare for though i'm 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 gonna file that away next time someone says how can i help i'm gonna have a response take them up there's always something that you can get them to do that's great i one thing i'll say about chris's house is their their kitchen door is their front door and it's incredibly welcoming and you come in and there's bunny melons kitchen table Ugh. right in the middle and it always looks beautiful but more than that it smells so good every time you walk into their house you're like i know this is going to be something special because Ugh. they're cooking something I love just that. divine i love that tara when it comes to event design how to yes. talk let's talk about welcome at a, at a large scale event i mean there's nothing more important i would imagine I would say so. I would agree. I think when we're designing a wedding, I always tell our brides that the most important thing is that every single guest, even if we have 450 of them, that they feel comfortable and that they feel welcome and that they never have to wait in line to get a drink. They always have a nice place to sit. Um, I can't live without dimmers, so the lights are never too bright. I don't want the band so loud that you can't have conversation. So I'm creating, creating... Um, a, a graciousness. I want. I want a 400 person wedding to feel like a dinner party for 15. Sure, amazing. And that is what I try to create and design um, in all of my events. And I would say that is the most gracious. You don't want to wait in line to even go to the potty. No. And that is. <laughs> those are my pet peeves. No waiting in line to get a cocktail. If you have a drink in your hand at all times, guess what? Everyone's happy. If you have a place to sit, everyone's happy. If you don't, if you, if the restroom's pretty close by and you don't have to wait to go, everyone's Everybody's happy. happy. Yeah. And that it. makes it um, gracious. I think. I love that. And making sure that everyone feels that they were well taken <laughs> care of. So. Comfort is something that's come up a lot in this conversation Mm -hmm. already. And to me, when I think about comfort and being comfortable at home, um, you know, there's an implied sense of familiarity. But at the same time, all four of you being the creatives that you are, you're sort of tasked with coming up with something original and dazzling and something that no one has ever seen before. So how do you sort of balance those two competing um, directives with, with what you do, where you're doing something original, yet striking that notion of familiarity that will instill comfort? Well, I think a way to do that is um, through the use of antique furniture. Mm. And a lot of times we'll use a very familiar um, a Louis Sixteen chair or a William the Fourth upholstered chair or um, something that we all know, but we uh, update it by either chalky whiting it. I love it. <laughs> and, uh, Alex. Don't stand in one place too long around Alex Papagostides. And um, and then we'll use an updated fabric or a bold color on it. And I think it, it gives you a sense of familiarity, but it brings it into this century and it also feels a little bit more youthful and approachable and, you know, nobody wants to see a period chair with a period fabric on it. So that's, that's kind cool. of our way of that's a great trick. making it feel fresh but familiar. Yeah. I, you know, speaking of, of things being familiar, I think that one of the things that I love to do, and Chris mentioned a roast chicken, um, is when you're serving people, you're serve, first of all, you're not trying out new recipes. You're, <laughs> you're almost always going back to something that is very, very familiar to you and also familiar to others, yes. such, that, such that not only the meal, um, and not only the meal is, is memorable, but also that you're able to actually engage with your guests more instead of, you know, having them guess what they're eating. So totally. I think that it, it's it's always really important to, when you're entertaining, that not only that you are at ease, but also that you're making your guests feel comfortable by by the things that are familiar. I love that. Yeah. That's really smart. Anybody else want to speak to? Yeah, that? that's the thing. What Keith is saying. Albert had a piece of paper on his desk that said, "The secret is keep it simple." You know, mm-hmm. and I think you want to 
have some magic and have some nice ambiance, but like, who doesn't love a roast chicken? Yeah, I mean, or a good, you know, pan seared steak, or you know, sure. like, you don't have to like, you know, wow people. Like for us, we do like beef stews in the winter that you can make a day or two ahead and so get smart. better. Yeah. You know, you want to think of things that is mm -hmm. going to make it easier for you so that you can be that better host and can be available to people. You know, like it's all in that sort of planning of like, well, what can we do that I'm not going to be a maniac, kill myself in it, you know? And it, it, there are lots of steps out there that make yeah. your life easier and sure. just to plan it out. So what are we going to do that'll make it easy? So Ashley's the queen of it. We call her effortless entertaining. <laughs> effortless entertaining. Effortless. Well, effortless. That's, that's, say, that's a no magazine catchphrase. Like yeah, effortless. Effortless. <laughs> effortless. And well, nothing I about always it say it if it's a Sunday night, order the pizza. Yeah, Set a pretty table. Yeah. Get someone yeah. to clean up in the kitchen and gather your friends and order pizza and have yeah. a wonderful and salad. Just enjoy each other. And and make make a great hors d'oeuvre. Yeah. And ask Chris to bring the dessert and, and you're good Chris to bring yeah. <laughs> but it really that is actually a luxury to me just have a couple friends for dinner have somebody help you know put it all away afterward and you can just completely relax and enjoy and That's so not great. worry about it. In anything. New York we do that all the time. We'll like set the table the night before and then order in. That's another thing. Set that table as far out as you can. I've seen Martha set that table two weeks out. <laughs> you know, really. and, and, and she does it and it's set and it's all done and you don't have to worry about that. You know, it's like that. anything you can do to get it get it done. But anyway, order in. There's no crime in like ordering from our via quadrono and we order you know six chickens or whatever fish and we mix the salad and it's just so nice to have dinner in somebody's home like we've all gone to so many restaurants and eaten out but to like pull up a chair and be in the surroundings it's just really really there's there's no better gift you can give somebody you know it's like we don't really need things these days we've all True. got enough but these experiences are what i think enrich our souls so <laughs> Alex begs to defer. <laughs> he says we don't need things. Huh? <laughs> I love it. <sighs> Something else that's um, coming to mind as you're all talking about this sense of comfort, though, is is really personal and experiences. And um, and one thing that you know I sort of wonder about is, or that I I kind of feel like I've observed, especially after the pandemic, is that. People are, you know, investing in themselves, they're investing in their homes, and they're sort of taking pride in creating these very personal places and experiences. They're less concerned with maybe show. Maybe before their home was about show, but now it's actually about what makes them feel good and, and that sort of thing. So how, with each of you working for clients, how do you, um, what are some of your tricks for making a space feel really personal? I, I think every space needs something living. And mm -hmm. when you're a decorator and people want you to come in and create this beautiful house with the fabrics and the antiques and the paint and the this and the that, it's really important to have them understand that final layer that we can't be there to create, mm. you know, yeah. every day of the week, but have them understand the importance of plants and caring for plants and cut flowers. and. To me, it's kind of what brings a home to life. To life. You know, I, I think that. a room without something living really feels so, sort of dead, to yeah. be sure. honest. So yeah. I think that's something really important. And we're lucky now we have in Millbrook, um, Anthony, Chris's partner, opened a store, Orangerie. So Amazing. I'm there like pretty much every day picking up one, <laughs> one thing or another. I'm and, on their Instagram um, page every day. Oh my yeah. God, it's heaven. <laughs> so I think teaching people the importance of that. And Chris has certainly taught that to me. And we have lots of wonderful mentors in Millbrook who are great garden people. And yeah. Ashley will call me and say, can you bring over some flowers to the table? And I'll go, I have to look out there and see what I have. <laughs> you know, we don't, we and don't then he arrived <laughs> like this. <laughs> Yeah, one of the first times I ever brought Anthony over to Ashley's house, she had asked me to dress up her mantle, and I went out there and I cut off of the evergreens and cut this and that, and the whole back of the car was just filled. And he was like, you're just never going to use all of this stuff. And every inch of it was watch used it. on it the thing. Watch. Yeah, watch, watch me. Watch. Just watch me. You know, it was, I, I, there's, there, in my mind, there's never enough. Like, I go out and do <laughs> lilacs. Yeah, the, in, in, in COVID, Nicholson gave us all epitaphs of what our, our tombstones were going to read. And <laughs> oh, mine God. is going to read. And I, I had hoped there would have been more. Because, like, you know, <laughs> no matter how many lilacs are, there, there's just not enough. Like, we just got to have that thing flowing. and. 
opulence has got to be over there. I, both Ashley and I grew up in, in homes where there just wasn't enough of, of anything. Yes. And so this is more, our, more, more. Yeah, our result of, of, of yeah. getting back. We, I grew up in the house where the mother said, kids, you're not allowed to have the shrimp. Like, I mean, come on, mom, please. Yeah. <laughs> more, <laughs> just have the shrimp. More, just, just have, have the shrimp. shrimp. I love exactly. it. Exactly. What about collections? I feel like yeah. all three, all four of you really, I mean, you, you have such an amazing collection of tableware. Well, you know, much to um, my husband's, <laughs> I have been collecting dishes probably for, since I was 12. I love it. And um, I'm pretty specific about what I collect, but I feel like lately, uh, since we have an outdoor entertaining space as well, um, and during the pandemic, I actually built a kitchen within that space. Amazing. Um, and so, uh, that gave me more storage space for more china and more <laughs> oh my other dishes. And so I think that if I had to count, I probably had, I don't know, 46 to 50 sets of china. Wow. Amazing. And, wow. And, and, and in addition to that, I have, I have just like service plates, 300, you oh know, et, et cetera, like that. I you love know, it. silver, glassware, all of it. Because I, I know that in, in our home, um, even though, quite frankly, we don't entertain more than 20 people at a time ever, mm -hmm. um, I like to be able to keep it fresh and yep. change it, you know, from time to time. And, you know, to speak to what Ashley said about incorporating antiques and things, you know, I, I collect Paris porcelain and, um, and old Limoges. Ugh. And so, you know, I like to incorporate those things in with, you know, things that are a bit more contemporary. I remember on one of the shoots that we did uh, for Veranda Magazine, um, where I did that cultivated life piece uh, for the magazine for three years, we incorporated Christopher's plates into that scene. And it was a scene, beautiful, beautiful setting within the vegetable garden, Love. where that we laid the table shoot. with gorgeous vegetables and dahlias that, uh, that I was pulling from the garden and those beautiful, beautiful, um, white plates with the blue swirls and then was a magnificent table setting and so you know I love to to, to do that and yeah. collections l allow you to do that and you know dishes are really only one of the collections and you know we'll have to, we'll have to, we'll, we'd have to be here all day to talk about the collections so I, I'm sitting here laughing because th their, their life sounds so fabulous and lovely I have three children and they tear and break up everything I have and so I only go to Goodwill and find the greatest cheap plates for 10 cents because they break them all anyway fabulous. I love it and fabulous. then my favorite thing to do is to go on the street of Charleston and everybody who they always trim their gardens on Sundays because the trash man's on Monday and all I do is go on my golf cart and dig up all the great leaves on the street and I, I Instagram it. all the fun leaves I find on the streets and make fabulous centerpieces wow. so that's I, they, amazing, at my, my that's amazing. you should not have told me that I, <laughs> And I put my children, and they're always like mortified. Mom, get out of their garden. I love it. <laughs> get out of their yard. And then I'm also horrible about foraging. So Olivia's having something that on Saturday. I was like, how is, well, I'll go to jail when I go down the street and, and start foraging for you tomorrow. <laughs> I love it. Is it against the law here? Because I'm already out with my snubs. And uh, so my life is a little bit different than everyone. Always, my table. Always travel with a clipper. In the oh, back of your I mean, travel with a clipper. I have clippers in my purse at all times and in my car and the golf cart at all times. I love yes. it. The car. <laughs> Remind me to tell you a story about foraging and I, Bellagio. But let me tell you, I buy flowers for weddings and we do huge <laughs> weddings with millions of flowers. And so I have a really hard time buying flowers. <laughs> so I have to just get them free off the road. I'm there. <laughs> I'm I, have, I throw them away all the time. It's terrible. I have a friend um, who's coined the phrase clip and sip. Oh yes, yes. Clip and sip. Yep. That's so a anyway, sip. I'm yeah. a little bit different than <laughs> these guys. I'm laughing. Well, you're all for what I like to consider experts in atmosphere. And I think that, again, something that has come up in conversation throughout the morning is the importance of atmosphere. But atmosphere is this sort of, you know, um, it, can, it can be hard for people to figure out how to achieve it on their own. So can you each share some tips and some secrets to creating atmosphere at home? And you can even, if you feel so moved, please also share a time when atmosphere went wrong. Oh, ooh. Uh. <laughs> Because um, we learn from our mistakes. Yeah, we do. I've never had that happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know. It is probably true. Actually. It is probably true. <laughs> well, I think, I think, you know, Chris can certainly elaborate on this more than I, but I think lighting is one of the most important things that contributes dim to atmosphere. Lights. And dim Tara was saying, dim the lights and 
always ask your electrician after you've gotten your C of O to put in the illegal dimmer on your Ooh. lamps so you can dim all the lamps. Mm -hmm. um, your kitchen, Chris always comes over and I'm Our in the, I'm in the middle of getting dimmer, dimmer ready it. and Chris is fixing all the lights. Mm -hmm. And I always say, if you can't see the candle light, you've got too much light in the room. So dim it enough yeah. so you can just see that candle flickering. Mm -hmm. Outdoor lights on a dimmer, that's Outdoor genius. lights on a dimmer. Um, yeah. Yeah. We use 25 watt light bulbs in the little sconces outside of our kitchen door. So you don't need any more no, light out no. there. Yeah. You really no. don't. You, you really just don't. want a glimmer of, of light like that. We have these sort of big overhead lights that are like spotlights for like when the dogs are out there and Anthony's prone to turn those on. And I'm like, turn those off. We don't yes. need those That's on. Right. Like, unless like the dog's lost or something. Like, <laughs> yes. we have to keep up, we can, keeping up a look here. Yeah. You know what I mean? a look. People drive by it's all the time. not good for the brand, Anthony. You know. yeah. No. I mean, it's amazing. It's I've, I've built these different <laughs> buildings and gardens. It's like putting speed bumps in on the road. It yeah. has slowed the traffic down 100%. People crawl by, you know, we get sometimes they pull in the driveway a little bit. And I'm like, oh my and I when I'm out there working, I'm like, I love it to see it. I'm like, oh, there's another one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so lighting is essential for atmosphere. What about fragrance? I, I loved Ashley talking about walking into mm. Chris's house and it just like, you smell something amazing roasting in the oven. Yeah, you know, it's oft, often real things. It's cooking a rhubarb pie or that roast chicken that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. it's, it's sort of normal stuff for flower scents. You know, I'm not against a candle, but the real smells are always the, the best ones mm -hmm. and I think yeah. convey home better mm -hmm. than anything else. And um, something seasonal, like a, a stew in the winter, because it makes sense. And <clears throat> I, I, I have to agree, you know, um, one of the things that I have always done in the design of, of my garden around our home is to incorporate blooming things that are, uh, that are along the pathways, mm -hmm. such that you get a fragrance of something and also something familiar. I love that, um, yes. Whether it's in the South, gardenias yep. or um, jasmine or other things um, of that sort, even herbs and, mm -hmm. and things that might crush under your feet mm -hmm. as you walk by Smart. are really important you know, to, to sort of transport one in another direction. I think yeah. that, that, uh, that lends itself to atmosphere. And you know, this is a shot of, of our outdoor barn where we entertain. And um, I, I think too, we were talking about lighting. Uh, that space is all about atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And we always choose a time of day where we can sort of evoke a feeling. Um, and we get the guests in as the light just is, begins to disappear. Something else is we have lanterns throughout the entire garden where we burn candles. And so people have the opportunity to actually experience the garden in a very different time of day. Oh, how nice. Um, in addition to the outdoor lighting, there's also that candlelight throughout the garden. Love so that. it's 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 lovely. Tara, well, atmosphere I, is well, everything. Atmosphere is everything. everything. So I would say my top um, tricks for weddings, I love low light land, lamps around a wedding so it feels like home. So, mm -hmm. you know, I never do big head spotlights anywhere. My pet peeve is walking into a tent and the, and the spotlight over there who's highlighting a flower is in your eye and you can't even see and drink and <laughs> eat because the spotlight's in your eye. So, um, I love low lamp lighting and um, music playlist oh, is yes. everything. Yes. So, yeah, is everything. I always have really great playlist. The playlist is so is everything. It. How do you keep your playlist fresh? Like, are, how are you are you finding new music? Are you? you I know? have really young girls that work at the oh, office. That helps. <laughs> Very <laughs> helps. That helps. Well, I'll, I'll actually Very say to that. And I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> um, my playlist consists of, you know, Diana Kroll and Ella Fitzgerald, and they're like, now who is this? <laughs> so, I mean, I have to bring in the young girls there's, to help me with that. There's nothing better than cooking to Ella Fitzgerald. Always. Agreed. Like, always. I listen Go to her to every YouTube. morning. Alexa, Billie Holiday Radio, <laughs> every it. morning when I wake up. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, it. we're doing, I'm um, Alex and I are hosting the rehearsal dinner for Chris and Anthony at love our it. house, and a very dear friend of Anthony's replied to the invitation the other day and said, what can I do to help? And I said, you know, Frank, make a playlist. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they would love that so much. And he Great said, was so excited about that. But A, he'd be 10 times better than I would. But it's a very personal thing. <laughs> yeah. And sure. it's kind of a gift to Chris and Anthony. I think it that'll is. be a lot of fun. And then I just said, you need to come over and help me with tech support before to right. actually get it <laughs> exactly. running. That's another yes. Make the playlist situation. and do the tech <laughs> exactly. support, for sure. And actually, it's something that will live forever. It's something exactly. that they can always have. Oh, that's and a nice be reminded role. of that day. That's Absolutely. Really nice yeah. 
Um, let's talk about your own homes for just a minute, and then I'm going to give the audience a chance to ask some questions. But what space in your own home feels the most representative of celebration of home to you? you I have to, to say it's my kitchen, mm -hmm. honestly. And, yeah. um, you know, again, living in an 1841 house, the kitchen was a separate building that was joined to the rest of the house with the addition, which is currently the dining room, wow. in about 1898. Okay. And so, being that it, it, it was a separate building, it has the largest fireplace in the house. Oh. And um, that space is the space that I love to create. It's the place where I put up all the vegetables and make the jams and the jellies and um, serve our dear friends fresh hot biscuits right out of the oven. Oh. and you know, plan the meals and um, it's, yeah. it's, it's all the things, you know, <laughs> that I really, really enjoy. Display collections mm -hmm. and, you know, so, in, you know, I spend a great deal of time in the kitchen and when people come into our home, they almost immediately come straight to the kitchen. So um, I think it's, it would be the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. The dogs are always underfoot. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Tara, what about for you? Um, the screen porch. There's a uh -huh. picture in here. Yes, and Hold it's on. not very fancy, but I love it because um, we sit there and I can drink and have cocktails. I, oh, I, oh, wow. I love it because I can, um, well, I don't know if it's so beautiful because it's it completely thrown together from thrift store finds mainly. Um, but I, and then I love, I have a table that I pull out and I can fit up to almost 30 on that screen porch and, wow. and do a dinner. And so every time I have anything, I like to eat outside. And I never use my formal dining room. I'm either always set up a party in the yard or on the porch. I love it. So I, I don't know. It. I love to hang lights out of the trees oh, or magic. just fill it with candles. And a lot of times it's, I use this screen porch because I live in Charleston, South Carolina, and we have lots of bugs. <laughs> so, <laughs> so mosquitoes will attack if not on, on the screen <clears> porch. <throat> so that's why I live there the most probably. I love it. Ashley, how about you? I think our living room to me in Millbrook says kind of the most about my house and about comfort and welcome. But what I do love about the house, we actually built this house four years ago and the kitchen, we looked at so many houses in Millbrook and they were either 18th century and kind of a little squirrely or <laughs> they were big new builders houses that had a kitchen living room together. Mm. And I really felt strongly about having them connected but not in one room so if you're standing at my kitchen island you're looking through a great big cased opening right into the living room so it's very connected so I love that about it because everyone wants to be in the kitchen yeah. but then people are in the living room so I think the connection in my house actually is what feels welcoming I love that come to think of it I love so, that that's great I love that and Chris, how about you? So I'm with Keith. Uh, you know, our house, as I was saying, the, the, the kitchen part is the oldest house, and the kitchen was the entire house at one point, and the family slept upstairs in one room. And so it's funny, it has, still has that sort of feel, although we now have a table for two in there mostly that we can pull up chairs oh, if shit. more people are there, and then our table telescopes out and becomes a huge buffet table, which is another secret and entertaining that you should do as much as you possibly can is we serve family style buffet because that way if you don't want to eat the potatoes you don't have to take the potatoes and if you want more macaroni and cheese or whatever you take more but like plus help if someone's dog gets sick yeah they don't have to help people. <laughs> right. yeah like it's the way to serve it's totally the i really believe in it and that people can pick I what they too. want so smart and get what they want it's a it's a trick that i learned from bunny she she always has a buffet yeah. over there um you know it's it's like i can't I went to a Thanksgiving once that was a serve Thanksgiving, and I was like, oh, oh yeah. you know, yeah. like, no, yeah. I want to pick how much style. Uh, I'm yeah. stuffing I'm going to get myself. You know, <laughs> right. it's, it's, it, that's another way of making people feel at home. Yeah, and that's like, so true. And not connect. only does it make it easier for you as a host, but it also makes people feel really comfortable. Yeah, sure. so because true. they can be like, yeah, I like this. No, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. and, no, thanks. So. Yeah. yeah. And you great. can use all your beautiful platters. Yes. Also I don't true. have enough platters. You don't need so. more. <laughs> I'd hoped there would have been more. You mentioned this, and this is not quite related to that last question, but something I learned from Chris, and Alex mentioned it yesterday too, but put a game table in your living room so you yeah. can have mm -hmm. dinner in your living room for two or four. Yeah, we have tables all over the place. So there, ours is a desk. We have Keith Irvine's desk. old desk in there that you can eat at. 
But outside we have this roving table that is the cider table that my mother gave me that folds up in the winter and the legs go underneath and it's put away. And in the summer we move it to whatever garden is in its prime and eat there. And we drag all the inside, a big hurricanes come out onto that table and William Yower glasses and my plates. Like we use silver sometimes. It's like, it. you know, like don't just, no paper plates, please. No, no. paper napkins. No paper like napkins. let's elevate it all. No. Like. You know, let's just do a little bit better. It takes a little bit more effort. So. But the notion of being able to eat and any be able to have a different setting yeah. for dinner, I think, is such a lovely. And a lap dinner is a great dinner too. At Christmas, yes. we have thirty-five oh, people come over, and Anthony and I cook the food ourselves. And people file through, and they can sit where they want. And the older people tend to sit in the dining room at chairs that are all set up, and then everybody else. And I bring up from the basement all these other chairs and put them here and there. And I think it's the best party because you can move. Let's say you don't like your dinner partner. Say, oh, I want to get some more ravioli and just sit here in the kitchen and then go sit down next to somebody more fun, you know. So. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Works. Any questions from the audience? Don't be shy, please. Let's go back to the mishaps. Oh, yes, oh, mishaps. No. Oh, God. Everyone's biggest this happened. Huh. Okay, so I'm baking the chicken, and, and Martha Stewart oh, yeah. is coming over, and oh, um, she's like, I've got the chicken, like, I've in the, in the book, there is a recipe for roast chicken where you salt the chicken the night before, and it's been salted, and this is all very last minute, and I've, like, got it in the oven, and she's, like, going to come over, and I, like, throw the chicken in the oven, and I put the chicken on, um, it cooks at 450 degrees, and I put it on convection bake for the 450 d degrees, and I, like, don't realize this until I'm, like, pulling it out, but you know, like, she screws up, too. I've been over there, <laughs> yeah. and she's baked, we like, a uh, blueberry cobbler, and she's used frozen, and she's like, you can't use frozen blueberries to make a cobbler. It's just some work. You know, like, we all screw up yeah. is the message, and yeah. you, people are understanding of there. They're, they're not coming over there. Like, she's honestly just glad to come over and have chicken at my table because a lot of people are scared to have her, mm -hmm. you know, and yes. so... You know, and people are scared to have me too. I put I myself yes. in that boat. They are scared. It's like, don't be scared. I don't bite. You know, have me over. Have me for a hot dog, a piece of pizza, yeah. as she says. It. You know, just invite people over there. Take it. Take a deep breath, and you'd be surprised. People come. You know, yeah. absolutely. Saying in the up. south, you hang out they, the ham, exactly. and people will come. And you know, it's yeah. really true. People so love true. to people to come. People love to go. Yeah. Other mishaps. I, well, I think that anybody that, that makes food has mishaps that <laughs> sure. happen from time to time. Of course, you know, if you cook long enough, if you bake long enough, you have cakes that don't rise, you have biscuits that don't turn out. I had a very strange thing happen the other day. You know, I, I being from the South, I use white lily flour. Mm -hmm. and um, Of course you do. Yeah. Um, I use self-rising flour in my biscuits because I have a certain way that I do them and they're always right. Oprah said so. <laughs> so, so saying something. Yeah, thanks. So um, I put my biscuits together. We had people coming over for brunch. The biscuits came out of the oven. Everyone ate the biscuits, even though when I tasted them, they weren't quite right. And the next day I happened to think about it, went back to that bag of flour and tasted it. and. From, from the store, it had too much salt in it. Ooh. Yeah, and so that was not a mishap that perhaps was my fault, but nonetheless, it happened. It happened. Yeah. These things happen, folks. But the art of the recovery is just as important, too, I oh, will yeah. tell you. Oh, so yeah. At Christmas one year, I was doing a baked Alaska for my family, and oh. meringue is really flammable, and I turned away from the thing, and I go back to the oven, and the whole thing is on fire in oh there. And I pull the baked Alaska out, and I throw a towel over it, and I'm like contemplating throwing the damn thing away, and I look at the thing, and I'm like, Gail Monaghan, my cooking teacher, would not throw this away. What would Gail do? Gail would get a fork out, and she'd pull those black bits off of there <laughs> and stick the damn thing back in the oven, which I did, and it was fine. So yeah. the more you practice mm -hmm. and the more you do sure. this, yeah. even with something that you're unfamiliar with, you will learn the art of the recovery, which we all know in oh. decorating is, is just important. But in the kitchen, That's you got to figure out, like, how do we turn the ship around? Because it, it happens the all the time. All the time. 
I ha that makes me think of a fun, a fun story. It my, this um, happened to me for a party, and um, it made me think because it was a Martha Stewart idea where they did colored sugar rim on the glass for a glass to serve at a party. So I had this party, and I think their theme was blue and blue colors or something. So we did blue drinks with blue on the rim of the glasses, had blue sugar rim, and they were these beautiful, lovely, awesome glasses, and it was, the details were perfect, and we we're passing around the party. And I walk around about 10 minutes later, and 100 people oh, no. are walking around with blue, blue shit on yeah. their face. And I'm like, oh, oh my God, oh my God. And you can't go around yeah. and everybody's like, huh? like, that is the worst stupid idea in the whole wide world. It was Everybody's awful. smiling like that. It was awful. It, all over every single person's face. Oh, it was terrible. So I learned my lesson on that. Uh, that is don't hysterical. ever do that. So anyway, that not all Martha's ideas are great. <laughs> <laughs> it just looked pretty it. in a picture. Yeah, I love it. Ashley? Well, I don't, I don't make mistakes because <laughs> <laughs> I keep it so simple at my house. You get the order in pizza mm -hmm. or what do we call it? Semi-homemade, Chris. You oh, semi cook well and you're a I good cook. Fine. And I do fine, that. but there's nothing elaborate enough in which to make a real mistake. Well, let's, so. move, away from, let's move away from cooking for a moment. What about yeah. a design situation where where a client where I had has to recover. A, where you had to recover. Yeah. The art of the recovery. Right. Oh my God. I had a. Um, every day. That's sort of every that's day. Right. And that is so true about the art of the recovery. Yeah. And, and sometimes the recovery ends up being better yeah. than yeah. maybe beautiful the original yep. design. We were working on a house in Greenwich and it was 10 years ago. And it's kind of the beginning of the sort of lime doke paneling thing that nobody really knew how to do it yet. And we wanted to do this lime doke library had a sample, everybody signed off on it. We had to, you know, it was beautiful. I come in two weeks later after it's finished, it is completely like orange cognac. <laughs> oh I mean, the opposite of what the we had asked for. Yeah. No one could find the sample. It just sort of disappeared into thin air with the mm -hmm. decorative painter, um, who I did not hire, by the way. I just want that on the record. <laughs> the contractor's decorative painter. It is one of the prettiest rooms. And we just went with that sort of cognac feeling and the fabrics were cognac and it all, it's kind of one of my favorite rooms. I love that. And it was the absolute antithesis of what we were planning. And Amanda Lindroth taught me something very important. She does tons of work in the Bahamas, obviously, and they don't get the option to redo, redo. it because yeah. you yeah. got to work with what's there. And she always says, plan B looks great. Yeah. And I really think that's a good mantra in everything, in yeah. entertaining and decorating. So it's Well, not the other thing you don't do, which you're not talking about, is you don't sweat over these things, or you don't let the client know you're sweating over them. Mm -hmm. you that's know? why I call you. Yeah, you call me and complain. <laughs> and then, but, no, but she doesn't. She really, because I'll get myself stewing in my own juices over stuff. I did this pool house that's up there. and. We thought that we'd put the washer and dryer inside of the kitchen area of it, and then there wasn't room to get a washer and dryer in there. And I was like furious. I was furious at my architect, furious at myself. And the architect comes up with the idea of a hutch behind the pool house that the washing machine and dryer are going to go in. And let me tell you, it is so much better to have right. your washer and dryer behind the building where you don't totally. hear it and it's out there and back there. And like you run cycles and it's it not heat Genius. or noise. So the, the things that don't work out sometimes are meant sure. to yeah. be. Yeah. So like getting yourself all stewed up about it in worth it, you yeah. know, yeah. and yet doesn't stop me from doing it sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But in the do, end, do it all works says. out. In do the, as he says. In not the as end, he it does. all works out. It totally does. It does. Oh. I, that's, that's so true. Plan B, C, or even D yes. yeah. is yeah. often better than <laughs> plan yeah. A plan ever a. was. Mm -hmm. I love that. Other questions? Yes. Uh, my question is what is your signature thing for each of you that you like to repeat? Oh, that's a great Ooh. question. Ooh. Wow. Um, I love to see a bar. I mean, I've seen all these pictures going mm -hmm. through, and I mean, I'll even repeat it within the same house. I was in Fisher's Island. We're starting to work on a project, and the husband was saying, well, what could we do with this room? And I'm like, this would be an amazing bar. And then we'd go downstairs, and what do we do with that? This would be a fabulous bar. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
I just so funny you're saying that. I and of I keep course, seeing all these beautiful bars. I do weddings, so um, we always have to have a bar. Loves a bar. And I would say our signature thing is from the beginning, for many many years, is building custom bars and making them really really big and really really fabulous because that's where everybody goes all night long. Yeah. And so it's the center. Of I mean, I always yeah. want it to look different and and style differently for that particular kind. If it's this fabric or the color everything's different but I love making big round ones big oval ones big square ones and I think we started that trend you know doing um, anyway sure. many, 20 years ago so that's my thing I love that. a I, great bar I know that for me as a gardener um, you know I look to one of my biggest gardening mentors Rosemary Veery who in mm -hmm. garden design used certain plants and repeated them throughout the garden and one of her um, plants that she really called upon often was lamb's ear. Mm -hmm. And lamb's ear was a beautiful ear. plant to incorporate into borders, to create blocks of beautiful color within the garden. It was a quiet place for the eye to rest as you move through the garden. And so I think that, that, that something like that on repeat within a garden space can be really powerful. I love that. Love that. One thing that I do a lot of is we'll have one center arrangement, but uh, it's an idea that I have stole from my good friend Kathy Graham is Kathy has lots of little vials of, of clear glass, colored glass, and we do one single flower then spilling out. And so the arrangement then envelops the table. Mm -hmm. And then within those single vases, there's ornaments that I bought at John Darien or little frogs or ladybugs that we then spew in there so that there's whole different things. And they're not the same ones every time, but they're, they're, that theme often is there. Mm -hmm. So it becomes more of a tablescape and a more of a, in not just one thing, and there's different candles and different photos on different levels, and that comes together to create the whole idea. I love that. Thank you. Anything else? I have a little lightning round oh for our, if uh, we don't have any other go. audience questions. <laughs> I have a, just a couple of parting questions for our audience members. Um, okay, so I'll just pick from like two or three here. First is um, best advice for a current or prospective client. Best advice. Keith, we'll start with you. Oh, um, or Ashley, we'll no, start with you. No, no, no. Oh. Go ahead, Ashley. Okay. <laughs> I, always, I always say floor plan, floor, floor plan, plan, floor plan, floor plan, connections, indoors, outdoors, mm -hmm. within rooms, circular floor plans just work so well. You don't need a big house, but if you have a good floor plan, you can welcome, you know, 100 people in your house oh. in, a, in a very small house. And My idea would be don't question your decorator. Your oh, decorator I love is that always one. right. Yeah, always. You always. have hired this person, <laughs> you have paid them a good amount of money. That's right. And if you listen to them, <laughs> your life will be easier and just do it and like. And I paid him to say that. <laughs> and I have to, I have to add, layer on to that. You know, having been in the event business for 36 years myself, and l much like that, I'm sure that Tara can speak to this, is that we do what we do, and we do it well. Yeah. And so, you're not a better entertainer than we are. Mm -hmm. You don't know all the answers. <laughs> we don't know all the answers, but please, by all means, you hired us because to you respect what we do, and you trust that what we do will be right for you. And we communicate with one another in a way that, that you will know that the product that you get at the end of the day is going to be the one that you asked for. And it's gonna be beyond what you thought. Tom, anything and to I, add? For me, I would say, and don't take yourself so seriously. Just Ugh. have a good time. Just have have good fun, life's yeah. too short. That yeah. is the truth, that Absolutely. is the truth. Perhaps that's our ending and thought, I think so. <laughs> Thank you all so much.